Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another Five Guns video for you, and we thought that what we would discuss today is the top five sleeper guns. So, you guys probably remember some of Barry and I's uh, older videos, and in some of those videos, Barry discussed the idea of, uh, okay, you're in court, and some prosecutor's holding up a gun, and of course, do you want him to be holding up Grandpa's old hunting rifle, or do you want him to hold up some evil, black, crazy, scary-looking thing? And, of course, the jury's going to go, <gasps> you know, so that scary. sort of thing. So the whole idea of a sleeper gun is something that maintains functionality and everything like that, but either its appearance is a little ho-hum where you're like, okay, this isn't scary-looking. Mm -hmm. It's either not scary-looking, it's unassuming-looking in that it, it, it performs a certain job, but it just looks kind of ho-hum. Or maybe it's a maybe a sleeper could also be a gun that maybe people don't associate with being a really effective type of firearm uh, to use for a certain purpose. Okay, so um, sleeper guns. Let's just go down the line. Well, I guess we could start with Grandpa's old 870 pump action, like 26 inch barrel shotgun. Yep. I mean that's real unassuming. That's just a duck gun. Right. That's no big deal. You know, and the thing is, what people end up getting all hung up over is cosmetics. It's really all it comes down to mm -hmm. is cosmetics. People are scared of things like the AR-15 or the AK-47 because they just look a certain way. Tactical shotgun. And and they just or or a tactical shotgun. They think, mm -hmm. oh, it's it's all evil and scary looking. So the purpose that you would have that gun for is only you know a negative purpose. It would ne never could be used for good or anything like that. So I know you've probably heard of these stories where you know um, young kid, uh, 14, 15 year old. Girls at uh, the house by herself, minding her own business. Some jack leg uh, decides to come in and try to mess mm -hmm. with her. She's, I guess, a turnkey kid, let herself in. And so what does she do? She goes and gets her tournament shotgun. She uses to shoot tournaments because she's a, a very skilled young shooter, right? Puts a buckshot round in the chamber and shoots the dang guy and deals with the problem. Now, is that to say that a person shouldn't be able to defend themselves with anything that, at their disposal? Mm -hmm. Does a shotgun have to hold... 10 rounds in order to protect you it doesn't necessarily have to, but it's a sleeper because someone thinks, oh, you know, you just got that old FUD shotgun. What could you possibly do with that? But I mean, a buckshot round or a slug round or a self-defense yeah. round going out of this shotgun doesn't know if it's going out of this or if it's going out of a Benelli M4. Or, I mean, I mean, literally, the, the shotgun that I have by the bedside is literally, it's an 870 and it's parkerized. And honestly, the finish on this gun probably holds up better then my parkerized one that's newer, and it's 18-inch barrel, it's a long tube, it's got a Surefire 4 in and stuff on there. Yep. I mean, it's more of a tactical style shotgun, a high cap tube and everything. Yep. But this is really like what Barry was talking about, an unassuming shotgun. If you defended yourself with this, like, well, I mean, it's nothing scary, nothing crazy. Right, but how does it look? You know what I mean? Oh, if, if it gosh. winds up being one of those things and some prosecutor's trying to bury you under the prison, Okay, because you shot the most upstanding member of society that night, and they broke in your house. He was a good boy. He would have never hurt anybody. Bye. Well, you know, he had Grandpa's old hunting shotgun in the corner. See, it's just unassuming. So, again, a sleeper shotgun. Yeah. Okay. So, another kind of category of sleeper type guns that we were talking about and discussing was um, guns that are kind of unassuming, you know, on the market that people don't really, you know, they don't really pay much attention to. Yeah. But they're really awesome for... A specific purpose that people don't really think too much about sure this is a Smith & Wesson 422 and Smith made a bunch of these guns back in the day and they're very unique they made a bunch of different models in stainless steel slides with aluminum frames They made stainless uh, frames as well this one's a 622 it's a little bit longer barrel but these are awesome suppressor hose because the barrel is low so the barrel is real low in the frame it's got a really low bore axis you can put a pistol can on this thing, like a 9mm or 45 can, and still see the stock sights. They are very, very quiet, suppressed, and they're cheap. Like, I saw one of these 422s on one of the local trading forums for $200, and the only reason I didn't buy another one is because someone got to it before I did. I mean, 200 bucks. You can't even buy like a Smith & Wesson M&P Compact 22 for less than 350 or Let so. Let me tell you something too I about mean, these but, guns. Man. These jokers are accurate as oh, all man. get out. This 622 here, the six inch barrel, is such an accurate pistol. Gosh. It shoots nice tiny little groups and everything like that. But so these are guns that a lot of people don't <clears> even know exist. 
And so, right. therefore, it's sleeper a sleeper. Gun. Okay. So, well, I guess next in the category. Might let's... as well talk about the Aculus since we're right. on that. So, we're talking about like suppressed pistols and stuff. All right. So, another category of sleepers, you think like a sleeper car. Okay. So, you got like a PT Cruiser going down the road, but you're like, oh, what's that thing? It's got a little four, four beater in it or four banger, you know, but it's got a Viper engine in it. Or, yeah, some souped I've up seen, engine. I've seen it done before. It's insane, but. You've got pistols and rifles, and we'll discuss this rifle here in a minute, but that look, all right, this kind of looks like a heavy barrel, you know, Mark IV Ruger, but, ah, under the hood, you've got something a little wild, you know, so. Right. This is made by Aklis Defense, and this is their Copus TI, and this is actually a integrally suppressed pistol. Hold that. So they actually take the barrel, and they cut the barrel back, and they machine the barrel back to give it all this extra volume on the backside, and then it has a mono core suppressor tube inside of it. And this is just, you know, all contained here and screw it back together and you've got an integrally suppressed Mark IV pistol. But yep. it doesn't look like anything. And it doesn't add any length to no. the overall setup. So let's just say you're a trapper or you like to carry a rimfire pistol with you when you go hunting or something like that. This is the perfect little setup to toss in your, in your holster go and you're good to go. I really like that setup a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and but that's a titanium tube on that. That is a titanium tube. That's why it's got that flame treatment on there. Yep. Yep, that's cool. It's mm -hmm. got the logo. It's oh, really yeah. neat. But they're good guys out there at Aquas. These, these guns, that, you know, the, the there's a lot of companies that have made the integral mark pistols for a long time, but when you get into like rifles, there's a lot of people that make integrally suppressed rifles too. And this is a CZ455 that has a KG made Tico on it. And this looks like Take that two or I know, I'm just half off yet. Um, but this is basically a bull barreled 455 that's had the barrel cut down and machined out into a monocore baffle stack, removing a ton of the weight. And it looks stock on the outside. It really looks unassuming. It looks like a standard factory heavy barrel 455. But under the hood, it's got something special going on. And it's super lightweight, super quiet. You know, it's just a sleeper gun. Yeah, so, that's neat. And it's light. And it's very light. Lightweight, you know, uh, compared to like a <clears> bull <throat> barrel counterpart of this particular rifle, it doesn't really add any weight at no, all. No, it, it cuts about half the weight out of the barrel by itself. So it's more effective, it's quiet, it's lighter weight. I mean, there's really nothing like or not like about a gun like this or like the Hackless. I mean, they're just wonderful, wonderful firearms. So, all right, so let's dive um, in, in terms of the sleepers. Let's dive into the Millsurp world just a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, so these are a little bit more modern guns. Uh, we'll dive into some vintage ones. This is a, a Mauser rifle that we did a video on not terribly long ago, uh, the Mauser Vigero. And it's, it, is, it is an eight millimeter Mauser rifle, but it has a very distinctive light handling characteristic mm -hmm. to it, a very distinctive and unique front, uh, front sight post design, a very lightweight barrel contour, a nice light handling characteristic, a really good two-stage trigger, uh, a really good Manlicker style split ridge action, and uh, this particular rifle is an outstanding shooter. Uh, so this particular rifle, what makes it a sleeper is everybody thinks, oh, well, when I, when I want to buy a Mauser rifle, mm -hmm. I have to buy a K98 or I have to buy a Swedish Mauser, which mm -hmm. are great, don't get me wrong, but pound for pound and dollar for dollar, this is one of the best Mauser values out there if you want an accurate, out-of-the-box, ready-to-go Mauser mm -hmm. rifle. Uh, these things are hard to beat, and they can generally be had for pretty respectable money. I mean, okay. what, sub 350 bucks or so? Uh, maybe not that cheap these days, but un under five, under comfortably five. under five. But, I mean, a K98, <clears throat> even one that's had the Nazi markings all scrubbed off of, you're they're, looking at, what, seven They bucks? are going up in price stupid. Even a lot the of the German are getting stupid now. Yeah, you know, but they are. We thought about this as a sleeper just because of the facts that Eric mentioned, and the thing is a fantastic shooter. It shoots I mean, so good. God, it it's not good. even funny how good this thing shoots. And I, I just like how lightweight it is. So mm -hmm. when we were thinking sleepers, I'm thinking, well, what about a stock Milser that's a good sleeper? And man, the, the Vigero Mauser, mm -hmm. such a wonderful, wonderful rifle. And uh, all you have to do is pick one up and you're like, wow, this thing handles so nice. Oh, yeah. It's just um, a very elegant rifle and not a lot of people know about them. Mm -hmm. So it's a sleeper. Now they do. Now they do, but uh, all right, so going down the line, I, I honestly feel like the M1 carbine is a sleeper. Back in the 80s, okay, and let's just say early 80s when NFA was still 
uh, prevalent and people could you know buy M16s if they wanted. They could buy full auto uh, M1 carbines or M2 carbines mm -hmm. rather. Um, there was a time, believe it or not, when they just about couldn't dang give these guns away. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. these things were cheap. They were prevalent. They were out there. That they are GI uh, guns. This is a GI M1 carbine in excellent shape, mm -hmm. and uh, fires a 30 carbine cartridge, 110 grain bullet, uh, moving at some pretty respectable speeds. And at close ranges, personal defense ranges, uh, you're just about toe to toe with an AR. Believe it or not, when you start looking at the foot pounds of energy that is afforded by a rifle like this compared to a standard service M4 with like 14, maybe even getting into 16 inch barrel length, but I'm trying to compare apples to apples. So if you compare this to a standard government issue M4 right now, mm -hmm. you're just about toe to toe in a you're, room to room fight. You're, you're talking slightly over a thousand foot pounds on, on both cartridges. If you're talking right. about using like 55 grain or like 62 grain ammo at the nominal speeds, I mean anywhere between about a thousand and 1200 feet or 1200 foot pounds. Well, you know, so, so you definitely got some power going now, obviously, at longer ranges, the M1 carbine is going to fall way short yeah. over the AR because the AR is, is a much better long range yeah. platform. It's not a spitzer shaped bullet, it's more of a pistol shaped projectile, you know, right. round nose and everything. So, but there is some awesome ammo out there that we have done some tests with that just really takes the cake. Right. The so, carbine. see, then you get in some of the more modern ammunition offerings in the 30 carbine, and then you really you take an older platform mm -hmm. and, and feed it some new food. Mm -hmm. and you almost kind of rediscover what that platform can really do. And we've done some testing with these Underwoods here. Uh, that's the Sh Extreme Cavitator, I believe is what that Wild. bullet's called. I think so. Yeah, the 85 grain Extreme Cavitator. So you're getting an 85 grain 30 carbine peel going at 2,100 feet per second. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking. Uh, that's a good bit of power. And I feel like M1 carbine's kind of a sleeper because everybody always assumes that a home defense weapon, let's just say someone wants to buy an AR-15 for home defense or whatever. Mm -hmm. You don't have to own an AR-15 for home defense if you don't want to. Let's just say you score one of these M1 carbines for a reasonable amount of money. Or maybe you find one for not a ton of money or, or Uncle Bob passes away and leaves you one and it's in good shape. You keep the tappet system clean, keep the bore clean, uh, put fresh springs in it. Man, these M1 carbines are they are accurate. They're very reliable. And you can get, you know... 30 round M2 magazines for it. So well, and two, it's something people tend to overlook, I believe. Two, the thing with the M1 carbine is there's no shortage of a variety of ammo out there. And you want to talk I mean, about handy. Mm. I you mean, can still, you can still find surplus ammunition or whatever. I wouldn't really bet my life on it at this point because it is getting older. You might have some duds in there, but there's a lot of companies that are making modern ammunition for the M1 because there's a lot of other guns that are chambered in 30 carbine as well. I mean, auto yeah. mags, revolvers, all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, they got the Ruger Blackhawks oh, that yeah. are in uh, in 30 carbine. Oh, yeah. AMT hardballers you can get in 30 carbine. I mean, if it wasn't a good cartridge, then why would anybody be making firearms in it these days? Agreed. So. You know, I think the M1 carbine is definitely in the sleeper category. Mm, for sure. Um, I, I will be honest. I'll, I'll lay a little bit of a tidbit of information on y'all. Recently, I, I did liquidate a few uh, firearms out of my collection, just uh, things that I wasn't really shooting that much anymore and everything. And I actually got rid of several of my U.S. service rifles because I just don't shoot them that often. Like, I sold a P-17. Um, I sold a couple of O3s. I sold one of my Garands. Actually, my last Garands. I don't have any more dang M1 Garands. Everybody's <laughs> going to hate me for that. But I just wasn't satisfied with the accuracy. Mm -hmm you know, that I was getting out of them. And instead of rebarreling them and all that, because like one of the ones I had had a VAR barrel in it. I didn't want to, you know, it was kind of a historical lend lease gun. I didn't want to like rebarrel it. So I just sold it and everything. But the point is, this is one of the U.S. guns I would never get rid of. Mm -hmm. My M1 carbine, these things are so awesome. And every single person I've ever let shoot one of these, they're like, they get a grin on their mm -hmm. face because it's just so shootable and it points so naturally and... These guns are great, and you don't necessarily have to go the vintage route either. You don't have to buy a USGI one. I mean, there's the Universals that are out there floating around, and then um, who's the Auto Ordnance now makes a new version of the M1 I think carbine. It's Auto Ordnance. I know they Fulton, do a paratrooper and yeah. everything. I know the Fulton Armory makes one that's pretty high quality, like forge receivers, the whole nine yards. Yeah. So. I think the Auto Ordnance uh, car arms and Auto Ordnance. I think they're got, like one company. I think they do. A, a M1 carbine, so that might be an option for some people. They are good guns. All right, so the other sleeper category that we'll get into. So these are just guns that as they sit, they're useful, they're cool, people overlook them. You know, these are specialized niche kind of things that people might overlook. Then you got your, you know, lawyer, lawyered up shotgun, right? I guess this is kind of the, this is kind of the wild card, I guess. 
All right, so a custom Mosin. A custom Mosin, what? What are you talking about, a custom Mosin? Who would customize a Mosin? This spot could really be filled by just about any type of quality sporterized mill syrup. I, I feel that they tend to be overlooked in some circles. Um, well, this they, is not an expensive rifle. They do. Well, at the time when, when that thing got put together, Mosins were still like a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. you know, and rock solid mount, uh, Boyd I think stock. that was, yeah, Boyd stock, and that was a pull off optic off of something else, probably at Moss, right. that we got for cheap. And Ray did the work on the, the barrel, cut it back and everything, recrowned it. That is a one minute gun at maximum. Like we've shot some stupid good groups with that Mosin, with the original barrel. Yeah. And that gun shoots better than some of the factory rifles we've tested. Probably don't have 500 bucks in it. Oh no. For a scoped not. gun. So that's the thing. I mean, like this rifle, you know, you can make shots out to five, 600 yards if you need to. Mm -hmm. Now, is, is it like, you know, silly sniper grade or anything like that? No. I mean, is it a good hunting rifle? Absolutely. Yes. Um, this could be, you know, perfectly fill a, a niche kind of hunting rifle scenario. Mm -hmm. Or if you wanted to have just a reasonably cheap suppressor host and you were, mm -hmm. you know, kind of savvy on being able to thread it and throw a can on it, um, a gun like this is excellent. Mm -hmm. I feel that a lot of these sporterized mill syrups uh, kind of get thrown by the wayside because people don't think, you know, they think, oh, it's some crummy, crummy old mill syrup. It's been cut up and nobody wants it. Um, don't be afraid to rescue mill syrups if you um, are in a, a situation where you see one in a gun shop and it's in decent shape and it looks like the the job wasn't you know too badly done mm -hmm. and maybe it can be brought back and maybe be a pretty good shooter. Yeah, the historical significance of the gun may not be there, but you might have the attack driver and not Look, know it. I've got a I got a funny story that I just came back to mind, but there's this fellow that follows me on Instagram that I was chatting with about Finn and thirty nines. And he was asking me about buying a Fin M39 that this guy had shot like of ammo through the barrel and the barrel was pretty much ruined and everything and it was cheap. So he got the gun. He wound up getting a new finished barrel for it and a stock for like 150 bucks there you and go. put the gun back together. He literally has like less than 400 bucks in a almost basically a brand new M39. Now it's not original, but you know, there it is. I mean, you can bring them back to life you for can. sure. For not a lot of money if you dig and you, you look hard enough for the parts that you need. But I feel like a, a properly sporterized, you know, military rifle, even if, if you do the work yourself especially and you can save some money mm -hmm. and not, not have to spend a ton of money, you'd be surprised the performance level that some of these guns can have and what they can offer. And I think that puts them in the sleeper category. Mm -hmm. So you've got so. the do-it-yourself uh, long-range rifle, uh, sleeper, you've got the you know forgotten military relic, you know home defense home option. defense option. You've got the overlooked accurate military rifles, but it's not a Car 98. But it's not a K 98. It's not a common gun. Mm. And then you've got your you know fud gun, your, your fud shotgun, your unassuming fud shotgun, right? That just looks like a duck gun, but you can defend yourself with it. Okay, right. you've got your integrals that look like a stock gun, but they got something quiet up under the hood. And then you've got your unassuming guns that nobody really cares anything about because they don't know, you know, the the vices of these guns that people just want to get rid of and they're cheap because they're not like the greatest and newest thing out there on the market. Right. There you I go. I think that covers the. I think I, that pretty. Much I think it covers all the sleepers that we can come up it with. It does. There, there's many more. So, is there a sleeper <laughs> gun that we forgot about that you guys think? that we're idiots for not putting in this video, let us know. Let us know what, what you think in the uh, comment section below. Uh, we thank you guys so much for watching uh, the Top 5 Guns videos. Well, I know these videos are meant to be kind of educational and a little informative, but they're meant to be kind of fun and entertaining too. So we hope you enjoyed watching today. Um, if you consume this content and you love what you're seeing and you want to support our channel, guys, uh, we really appreciate all of our folks that uh, support us on Patreon as well as purchase man cans to help support our efforts. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. So if you watch the channel and you love what you see, consider becoming a Patreon or purchasing a man can to help support our efforts. Thank you so much. We have many more videos on the way. Tons of cool stuff coming. We'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. See you soon.